So if you watched the previous video on shooting sugar cubes, you'll know that high speed photography has little to do with the camera you're using and everything to do with the flash and triggering that flash at the right time. So what I'm going to do in this video is show a couple of ways of creating sensors to detect the bullet and fire the flash when the bullet is in frame. So this flash is a Young Nuo 560, which is a Chinese flash, pretty cheap, but it does have what we need, and that's low power settings, 1 128th. So the lower the intensity, the faster the flash will be, and we're looking for speed this time, so we need as fast a flash as we can get. And to fire the flash, all we have to do is connect a cable to either the PC port or the hot shoe adapter and connect them two wires together. So first up, I'm just going to make a really simple trigger out of a couple of sheets of aluminium foil and a piece of cardboard. This is actually aluminium tape, which is a bit easier to use. And I'm just going to tape that over the hole, leaving a bit of overhang out the end. Repeat that on both sides. And then you can clip two wires onto each side. So now when the bullet passes through the center, it'll make a conductive path, connecting both sheets together and firing the flash. Okay, so that's the easiest way of getting a picture of a bullet, but it's not the best. Obviously, you're going to have to shoot through that foil, which is going to get in the way of the shot. Anyway, so what I've done is design another sensor, which will detect when the bullet strikes an object. So them initial vibrations, when it hits, will fire the flash. So what this is, is a piezo buzzer. And when power is connected to that, It'll run through a driver which will put high frequency pulse of electricity into a piezo transducer and make a loud buzzing noise. So they're using fire alarms and truck reversing beeps and things like that. But they also work in reverse. So if I hook one up to an oscilloscope and give it a tap, it produces a voltage in the range of about 30 volts. So you may be thinking, well great, that's 30 volts, all I have to do is connect it up to the flash, tap it and it'll fire the flash. Well, yes and no. The problem is it works on such a low current, it just can't provide enough to fire the flash, unless you belt the living crap out of it, which isn't that useful. So bear with me here, I am going to pull the guns out later. But for now I'm going to show how I designed a simple circuit that increases the sensitivity. So including the flash it's only four components and at its heart is a transistor. So what happens is the current from that piezo transducer is run through a resistor to protect the base of the transistor which is quite sensitive to overcurrents. Now applying a small amount of current to the base will allow a much larger amount of current to flow through the collector and emitter. And that's the core function of a transistor, to allow a small amount of current to switch a much larger amount of current. So let's hook that circuit up to the flash and see what happens. So you no longer have to belt the crap out of it. A light tap will fire the flash. But sorry fellas, I'm not finished yet. I'm going to try and teach you my bastardised version of electronics, even if you don't want it, because I don't think it's sensitive enough. We're trying to detect the bullet striking something on the sensor, not striking the sensor itself. So now we're going to exploit the other property of transistors, and that is that the current flowing from the collector to the emitter is proportional to that flowing into the base. So what I did was tap some of that current coming from the flash and direct it through the base of the transistor. And what I also did was flip the transistor around. So the collector and emitter have swapped places. This is going to change the properties slightly because they're not exactly symmetric. 
and the effect that had was that I could use much lower resistance values for that tap. In this case 100 kilo ohm was about right. So what that's doing is applying a little bit of current constantly to the base which means a little bit of current's flowing from the collector or in this case from the emitter to the collector but not quite enough to fire the flash. So now the piezo transducer only has to provide that small amount of current to tip it over the edge in effect increasing the sensitivity of the sensor. So let's see what that does. So now it's considerably more sensitive and can detect the vibrations through that rubber mat. But I'm sorry girls, I'm not finished yet. Let's add variable sensitivity and that's really simple. So swap out the 100 kilo ohm resistor for a 47 kilo ohm resistor and a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer which is just a variable resistor. And now that we have its final form, I'm going to mount it inside some polycarbonate sheet. So I did use a couple of sheets of polycarbonate and a sheet of rubber to keep things as a solid unit. And now I have a flat surface that I can place anything on and shoot it off and the sensor will detect the bullet impacting it. And because it has variable sensitivity, I can either detect the bullet hitting it, or it'll even detect a small bit of tissue being dropped onto the top of that polycarbonate sheet. And dialed right up, it'll even detect sound, so I can detect the gunshot. And now that that's all complete, we just have to wait until it gets dark. And the rifle of the night is the Browning Pump Action 22. So this is the basic setup. So I've got a tin pot sitting on top of the sensor. The flash pointed at the top of the plate and the camera pointed at that. So what I'm going to do is set the camera to 1.6 second exposure on a 10 second timer. So once that 10 seconds up, the shutter will open. I'll take the shot, the flash will go off, then the shutter will close. And hopefully that flash is gonna capture a picture of the bullet. So this is a piece of chalk. So it is an action shot, but there is no bullet. So I'm going to have a play with the sensitivity and try a few more shots. Okay, so the bullet's hidden in there somewhere amongst the cloud of chalk. So let's shoot an apple. So this shot was actually dialed up to be sound sensitive and it captured a good shot of the bullet exiting. In this shot I missed, but what it does show is how far the bullet travels in the duration of the flash, which is about 40 microseconds, and that shows the limitation of the standard camera flash. So that's a banana. Now I'll shoot a can of lemonade. And you can see the bullet just exiting. Now I'll dial it back to be a little less sensitive. Okay, now I'll try the foil trigger that was shown earlier in the video. Now the space that you see there is the actual camera flash lag. And let's have a closer look at that. Using the oscilloscope, I've connected channel 1 to the wires off the flash and channel 2 to a red LED. Now I'm going to point the flash at the red LED and connect the wires together. So what you're looking at is the triggering of the flash, 300 microseconds of lag, the internal high voltage pulse, and the light as detected by the red LED. So if we take that 300 microseconds, divide by a million to get seconds, times that by 216.4 meters a second, the velocity of the bullet, we get 6.5 centimeters, and that's what we can see. Anyway, let's shoot at the apple again but actually hit it this time.
That's a bottle of water with the bullet just exiting. And a coffee cup with a bullet just impacting. And another piece of chalk. Anyway, that's it. And I know this video was a bit long and maybe even a bit boring, but I wanted it to be as informative as possible. If you learnt something, hit that thumbs up button down there below. And I'll try and make another video soon.